You can create mathematically derived forms in SketchUp with Ruby scripts, and I'll show you three separate scripts that I've used from time to time. First of all, Peter Brown has written a script called Draw Helix, which is invaluable when you're creating handrails for circular stairs, screw threads, or any number of helical structures. Gavin Kistner has written a geodesic script, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. And finally, Claudius Crutch has written K-Tools, which allow you to graph equations in SketchUp. We'll take a look at Draw Helix first. It's on the Draw menu, and it has a dialog box. You'll see these approximate measurements in here because it was written in metric, and so it's converting automatically here to these imperial units. I'll type in 4 feet for both end and start radii. The pitch is the height of the helix. I'll make that 3 feet. I'll set 5 rotations with 24 segments per rotation. And there's the helix. It creates a polyline. Let's try it again. Draw a helix. This time, the end radius will be 0. And I'll start with a 4-foot radius and a 3-foot pitch. In this way, you can make the helix diminish. Gavin Kistner's script is on the Plugins menu at the top of the list. Create Geodesic. The first thing we're asked here is to select a primitive type. Looking at this list, I'm wondering why we don't see cube or dodecahedron. After I used the tool, I realized that these aren't actually the primitives that you're generating. These refer to the internal structure within the geodesic dome. I'll use an icosahedron for the internal structure, and I'll set the radius here. Note that you can't use feet here. It has to be in inches. So if I want 12 feet, I'll have to type 144. I'll take that with two subdivisions and click OK. We have an instant buckyball. Let's try that again with a different type of internal structure. I'll go back to the Plugins menu and choose 144 for the radius, and this time we'll go with Tetrahedron. We get a different type of structure, not as conducive to making a dome. The last script that I'll just touch on are the K-Tools. They're also located in the Plugins menu. There are many different graph types that you can create here. Let's just take a look at the 2D graph in Cartesian coordinates. We'll create a graph in the XY plane, in other words, the red-green plane. I'll accept the default values for the range and the step width. And here we can type in a mathematical formula. This is x to the second power, or x squared. This is the equation for a parabola. Let's take a look at it in the top view. I'll make another graph in Cartesian coordinate space, also in the red-green plane, using the default range and resolution. This time, I'm going to type in a formula that I looked up in Wikipedia for a catenary curve. It's the hyperbolic cosine of 1.6 times x. This represents the curve that you get when you hang a length of chain or cable under the influence of gravity. If you turn this upside down, you would create a self-supporting catenary arch that doesn't require buttressing. So the mathematical tools can be useful for creating real objects. Being able to change the drawing axes becomes of critical importance when you start to work with more complex geometry. Here I'm working with a nine-sided structure, and so I have some unusual angles to deal with. The drawing axes are represented by the red, green, and blue lines here forming a tripod. You can see that I've centered this within the design, and this is a good practice whenever you're dealing with a circular or regular polygonal structure to center it around the axes. Also, if you're creating a component, it's a good practice to locate the drawing axes in some meaningful location, because the drawing axes within the component become that component's insertion point, and we'll cover components in greater detail later on. You can toggle the display of the drawing axes in the Styles window, 
Go to the current style and choose Edit, and then click this last button to go to the modeling settings. You can toggle the model axes right here with this checkbox. It merely displays or hides the axes. Sometimes when you're doing a presentation on screen, it looks a little bit cleaner to toggle the axes off. If you're using My Shortcuts, you can toggle this by pressing Control A. There are a couple of different ways to change the axes. In the first approach, we'll use numbers, and then I'll show you how to do it graphically. Let's say we know a specific angle that we'd like to rotate the axes. This will allow us to draw geometry on an angle. Right now, if I were to draw a rectangle, it would align with the axes. Let's go ahead and change the axes and draw another rectangle and see the difference. I'm going to zoom in here a little closer and right click on one of the axis lines. Now, it doesn't matter which line you choose, and it's important not to click when you're on top of something like this. I'm going to get a different menu if I right click here as compared with right clicking here. I'll choose Move from the context menu. Here we have a chance to set in an offset distance for the axis or a rotational angle. In this case, let's say we want to rotate the drawing axes 40 degrees around the blue axis. Now I'll draw another rectangle and you'll see that it aligns with the axes. Let's say we want to go back to the original orientation of the drawing axes, but we don't want to be bothered to go back in and type in any numbers. We can just right click on a drawing axis and choose Reset from the context menu. And we'll go back to the original drawing axis. In AutoCAD, this would be called the World Coordinate System. Now let's take a look at the graphical approach to changing your drawing axes. I'll just zoom in here on these purlins and rafters. And let's say I want to create another purlin here down a bit. And I don't want to try to figure out this angle. I just want to do it graphically. Well, I can do that fairly easily by changing the drawing axes with the Change Axis tool. If you're using my shortcuts, that's Option A to activate it. And then there's a drawing axis connected to the cursor. Click a point to determine the new origin and then click a second point to determine the direction of the red axis, and a third point to determine the direction of the green axis. Now the tripod is located here. So I can easily slide objects along its blue axis. I'll press the up arrow to lock the blue inference. And you can see that I can easily move this purlin up and down the rafters. Maybe I can rotate the point of view to show you what's happening there. So this is really the key to working with more complex geometry. If I want to work on these purlins over here, I just need to press Option A again, click here, click here, and here, to create a new orientation for the axes. Then I can go ahead and either draw a new object or move an existing one in this new plane. Just try to rotate somewhere here where you can see this a little better. There we go. So I'm able to create geometry in this plane parallel with these purlins. One final tip is kind of a convenience that I've built into my shortcuts, and that is reset axes. Is I'll press Shift A, and it automatically goes back to the original orientation for the drawing axes. You can see that down here. So just to recap, we have Option A which allows you to set the drawing axes. We have Control A, which toggles the display of the axes wherever they are. And we have Shift A, which resets the drawing axes. If you want to change the axes numerically, you have to right click on an axis and choose Move to access this dialog. In some rare instances, you'll find the need to project edges on faces, and this can come when you're working with some kind of complex geometry. Fortunately, there's a Ruby script that solves most of these issues. It's called Projection Extension, written by Didier Boer. This is the person who runs the SketchUp Library Depot. This was written in 2005, and actually some of the tools don't work in SketchUp 7, but I figure I'd like to show you anyway because there's some very useful parts of this toolbar here that I'd like to demonstrate. First of all, I can take an edge like this, hexagon, 
and project it down onto the surface below. I'll select the surface, and I'll click this tool. This projects the selected lines perpendicular to the selected face. If we say we don't want to create faces, this is the result. It's the two-dimensional shadow of this geometry projected vertically down onto the face. If we want to create faces, then I'll just change this to yes, and you see the difference. You can also do something like this. You can take a line and a face and use this tool to project the line perpendicular to the face. Again, we have a choice whether we want to make faces or not. I'll say no. And we get a line shot straight down onto the surface. Over here we have a series of lines. Let me select them all. And I'll use this tool to extrude them up in the blue direction. Let's make them 8 feet high, as if they were walls. So this is kind of an alternative method for creating walls out of a single line representation.